Hey, this is a match once again. We're about to another video. Carson sent in a paid request for this. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's interested in requesting a topic or a review, a movie review, re review, commentary, video game playthrough, or a let's try, whatever the case may be, a tier list, PayPal is usually the best bet, or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. This is for Godzilla X Khan, the new empire. I mean, hell, we have the Frozen Empire. Ghostbusters, which I did not see that film. Kathy Kennedy's Empire's come back to kill Star Wars and Indiana Jones and any other properties. So we've had her empire for a while. Disney is the empire and they're running wild. More so than Hulkamania. So let's have all the empires. So everything can fall like the Roman Empire. I know a lot of people like this film. Teach their own. I thought this film sucked. I thought this film sucked my balls. I thought I sucked my taint. Uh, dumb, fun. I mean, they got half her right. Dumb, fun. I'm sorry. I mean, I look at this film and let's say it's two hours, about two hours. I don't see what's fun about an hour where you have a bunch of stupid humans being stupid and boring and annoying that do nothing but waste my time while Khan goes to the dentist and gets a tooth out with Ace Ventura here, played by Dan Stevens. And I say that because they call him Ace Ventura. It's one of the witty jokes in this movie. Uh, people say it's wall wall monster action. I don't know what movie they saw. They must have gone into the Twilight Zone, as this one of the songs in this says. Maybe they stepped into the Twilight Zone and saw a different version of this movie that had wall wall monster action. This did not. The first hour of the movie, you had Team, you had Godzilla in two scenes. Well, maybe three. He had a 30-second fight. Then he had a 10-second fight. Then he ate a power plant and slept in a coliseum like a fat ass. A con. He ran away from some creatures, made a trap. And then for two minutes, he used a baby con as a nunchuck. Kung fu, you know, nunchuck. Monkey Man, and, oh, by the way, then he fights the meth head called Scar Khan, because that villain is such an anticlimactically uninteresting, boring, pussy-ass villain. He's a lengthy-ass meth head. Wow, I got to see Team Khan fight a meth head. Whoop-de-doo. He gets a power glove that he stole from Bumblebee. Uh, Godzilla makes Khan his bitch again. Just, apparently, that's one rule you find out. King Khan, no matter what, will always be Godzilla's bitch. Because he can have a power axe that he stole from Thor and Avengers Endgame. He can have a power glove he stole from Bumblebee from Transformers. It don't matter. Godzilla's going to beat the ever-loving hell out of him. Because against Godzilla, King Khan's a bitch. No matter what. Rematch. Imagine Rocky had two matches and he lost both of them. <laughs> the first one, okay. The second one was like, oh, Jesus. At least Rocky was able to win the rematch. I don't see... Even the end fight sucked. Not much happened during the end fight. Scar... I'm going to call him Meth Head. You know, the, the Scar... The, he's, just, he's a lengthy-ass ball-headed Meth Head. I may be bald, but I'm not that lengthy. And never tried meth. Maybe I should try meth. Because maybe I would enjoy the film if I had meth. Methamphetamines of any sort. Maybe I'd need a crack pipe. For all the crack pipes the writers smoke right in this fucking movie. Because that's the only way I could see why they wrote the script. Because they had a lot of crack in the pipe. And oh it's fun man. What's fun about it? What World War fights? Nothing happens in the first hour. I would... Baby push it, baby to like maybe five minutes worth of stuff in your first hour. That doesn't make a good movie to me. I'm sorry. But you know, I'm going all over the place. First off, the title's stupid. Godzilla X Con. I don't know why it sounds like they're going to fuck. You know, maybe they did. I would enjoy it more. Because at least I would give you give me more to talk about. Just have a monkey pull in the pole position. And Godzilla's on top and his tail wrapped around Khan's neck. 
Instead of who's your dad, he says who's your dad, who's your dad, who's your dad. And it's just that tail, um, uh, his mom, Donkey Kong, Monkey Kong poop shoe. I don't know why this was just not a King Kong sequel. It should have been. Because of the little bits that these two creatures have on screen, if you add up all the time of just the two creatures on screen, 90% Kong and 10% Godzilla. And even that's being lenient. Because I'll say 10%. I would say lesser, but you know, a little bit at the end. Why not just make this a King Kong 2? Just make it con to the new empire, whatever you want to call it. And just leave Godzilla a surprise. King Khan is doing this. He's fighting the bad guys. He's holding his own. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's getting pushed back further, further but he's fighting more and more. And then the humans go, we got to get him some help. And um, yeah, it took some convincing. But... Khan is hiding and he doesn't know what to do and he's trying to make the last ditch effort. Maybe he'll succeed, maybe he won't succeed. And then you hear a boom, boom, boom. And the bad guys turn, you know, Shimo and the meth head turn and the other monkeys turn. And then you see it's all smoke and it's all a silhouette. And you just hear the roar, you know. And you come in, you. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Brought some backup. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. That would have made a much more impressive effort and moment than making your damn title Godzilla at Khan and Godzilla is a damn cameo in the movie. It's stupid. When we'll put him front and center on the title, but he's in the movie for like less than 15 minutes that makes a lot of damn sense that's like if Freddy vs. Jason if uh, Jason was in it for 5 minutes in the first hour and he pops in for like the last 10 minutes you'd be like what the fuck so again Team Tom's running from these creatures he's in the hollow earth uh, there's no f of him fighting these creatures. He's able to make a trap, which I, I guess he's good enough to make traps like Arnold and Predator. Makes me wonder why he didn't try to make any of these traps on Godzilla <laughs> when they fought before. But then he's able to succeed. He escapes. So he's lonely. I don't know what made me think of that song. The meaning of being lonely. And he gets a toothache. So one of the big scenes of Khan is him going to the dentist up top so he can get his fucking tooth out. So you want to see Khan go to the dentist? Here's your movie. Godzilla has a 30 second fight. He fights this crab like thing and it's barely to fight. He can jump like he's a kangaroo now. Because Godzilla can do that now. He can jump like a kangaroo. I didn't know Godzilla could do that, but apparently he can. People got mad in 1998 Godzilla when he was jumping around, but this is fine now. He jumps around that movie is bullshit. He jumps around this movie is fine. I guess because he looks like Godzilla, though. Maybe I'll give you that. But it's not even a fight. It's just he jumps, <gasps> breathes, on, breathes on the motherfucker, and dies. So, you have this little psychic girl from the previous film who had to give a rat's ass about. Uh, she's deaf. That's pretty much, she's deaf. She's psychic and she's deaf. She's the last of her tribe, but really her tribe's in the hollow earth. And if you think I give an iota of a rat's ass about her story and the human story, you're in for a rude awakening. I don't know why anyone would give a crap. And most of the movie is about that. And that's what these films don't understand. If you don't make that most of the movie, and I know a lot of older Godzilla films do that. You do argue, though, that because they don't have as much of a budget, and they don't have as much of the Hollywood backing of that major studio, they can't be on screen as much, so we have to make sure the humans work. And, they, you know, they have much more of a sincerely charming or sincerely campy value to them. 
Godzilla minus one, and people was like, you can't compare the two. Uh, th you think this is movies try to be the Oscar caliber? No. I know it's going to be popcorn entertainment. I know that. I'm just saying Godzilla minus one, I thought the effects looked better, and they had a fracture of the budget, because I think they gave a shit. And two, the human story was actually worth a crap. You just still make a fun popcorn movie, and I still like the characters. I like the characters in Twister, Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt. I like the characters in Independence Day, Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum stuff with his dad, the way Jeff Goldblum back to they punched out Bill Pullman's character at their bit of tension. It's not Oscar caliber, but I enjoy it. I think it's fun. You can't make that. Even Cosco Island. John C. Riley, his whole character, his whole background, where he was left behind and he misses his family and doesn't realize how much time has has uh, passed and the sense of humor, that was a worthwhile character. There's none of that in this movie. And when you have spent so much time with these people, you have Rebecca Hall, who is a uh, bitchy, bland white woman, Brian Tyree Henry, is the comic relief who's boring and it's a comic relief that forgot to be funny dan stevens wastes his talent because he's a good actor on being a wannabe ace ventura because they keep calling him ace ventura because he's the veterinarian that's really all he is and he gives uh con his new jack off hand like i give a trap again when you spend so much time with these human characters why do you why should i give a crap Godzilla Minus One was actually pretty surprising that I actually gave a crap of that. And then when Godzilla comes, even when he's not around, you feel his presence, you feel his spectacle, you feel his aura. And then when Godzilla's actually doing something, it feels like it, met, it means more. And again, that looked better of a film and that caused a fraction of the budget than this. Overblown for useless endeavors. This movie is a flash in the pan. By the end of the year, this movie will be forgotten. I'm sorry, but that's the case. So you have Godzilla barely being in the film. You have effects that I think are not that great compared to Godzilla Minus One, considering the budget. And also the fact that everything, it's like a... I, I was going to see a Michael Bay Transformers film, but even Michael Bay had explosions that were real. It's like a new Marvel film. That's more like it. These movies are like the new Marvel films and the fact of everything is CGI. I did it. Okay, King Kong, Godzilla, they don't want to do suits because they feel it would be too campy and too, to say the word, cheesy. But everything, the buildings are CGI, the sky is CGI, everything, the hollow earth is CGI, the plants are CGI, every fucking thing is CGI, to the point it, it feels like I'm playing a video game and someone took the damn controller away from me. Even Godzilla 1998, as much as people crap on that film, they knew that yes, there's going to be CGI, but some close-ups of Godzilla is practical, of the eyeball, or the hand, or parts of the jaw, and they'll have the city, this fantastic model of the city, where the helicopters and Godzilla's gonna be going in, and so you have the camera going through these big model cities, that there's a tangible quality. When there's an explosion, they blow up a model, because there's a tangible, physical commodity. There's a physical presence that you can detect with the eye, when everything is so much CGI, and no, this is not the first film, and it won't be the last film to do it, but I'm sick and tired of watching video games on the screen, I'd rather play them on my PS4, okay? I'm tired of that excuse. Have a melding of the two. If you can't do all practical, at least have a, a merge of the two. But well, everything looks like a damn Marvel or so tired of seeing that. It doesn't that's not my kind of popcorn movie, I'm sorry. There are exceptions, there's always exceptions. There are always exceptions, yes. There are films with CGI like Deep Rising and others that I enjoy. But there's also elements in there that they have, and there's elements they incorporate, and even like Deep Rising, it's like the finale when there's the whole room's going up and bit I don't want <laughs> Now I'm trying to review D-Rising. But 
this, I found none of that. I found nothing physical. I found nothing tangible of any of the environments, the, even the, the buildings, nothing. It's like I'm playing, a, like I said, a video game and someone took the controller or back. Give me, give me the controller back. Because I'm not into the story. Can you really sit there and tell me you're into the story if you like the film? Can you really sit there and you like any of the human characters that take the majority of the time? It's not like Team Khan is in most of the movie. As in, I think in the first hour, you see the, the brief scene where he's chased. The, him going to the dentist. He goes into this thing and finds his little monkey, the ape, baby Khan, who bites him like the little turd he is. And then you have the other apes and Khan... The scene where he beats the hell out of him and then uses the little guy. I mean, it's goofy. He's using him like a nunchuck. Wah, 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 you know. I get what they're going for, but it, it did look a bit silly. <laughs> but Sally, that was the best scene in the movie. That, like, two minutes in the first hour was the best scene in the movie. The best scene in the movie for the first hour is Tawn using a baby Tawn as a nunchuck. That says a lot about this fucking movie. Well, it's not the best scene. Then you tell me what was. Godzilla? Uh, the less than two minutes he's been in the film? Give me a break. Dan Stevens being called Ace Ventura? So they did, there's a, again, Brian Tyree Henry, he was in the previous film as the, like, conspiracy theorist, podcaster type of guy. I did not think he was funny. Uh, I thought he was really irritating. Uh, he did nothing for me. None of his jokes worked. None of his jokes made me laugh. Uh, the little girl, a, the deaf girl does a distress call, so they had travel to the hollow earth. So it's going to be just five people, which is weird because they're going to a very dangerous situation and they take this podcaster guy and okay, he has a few notes, but I don't know if he'd be real. At least take a full team with weapons with you, but no, it's Dan Stevens, a little girl, some lady, some podcaster and the pilot. You're not going to have like an other ship or something to have, or a second ship or something for backup. You're going to the Hollow Earth. There's going to be a lot of dangerous stuff there. You have no backup. Nothing. So stupid. That makes no sense to me. So they open the portal. They go through. They walk around a bit. Lo and behold, the pilot, he gets munched by a plant. I don't know if we ever see those plants again. Uh, we go back to Khan and Baby Khan. Baby Khan tries to screw over Khan. So Khan fights a water monster off screen. Because the serpent grabs Khan. We cut away to Baby Khan running. And then we see the axe fall. And then the head of the serpent. So we don't have a fight with Khan at the beginning. It, it's just using traps. Now you think maybe this is going to get to the finale where he'll like try to communicate with Godzilla and it's like let me create these traps and you lead them to me. You think this is going to, this, no, no, none of that. By the finale he, I know, I know there's no time, I get it, there's no time. But at the same time if you, if you know you don't go into battle, maybe it's like, hey, let's let me help create some traps just in case. I mean, if he's smart to do it in all Earth, why can't he do it? Whatever. I think just there's some missed opportunities. That's just a little thing for me. Not a big deal. That's just a little thing. Some missed opportunities to use the I guess the bad guys at the end. But more so, this is another fight we could have seen and it cuts away. Again, the non-stop monster... That's what I'm getting at. The non-stop monster action. I don't know what people are saying. The non-stop monster fighting. Uh, again, your first over hour, the most monster fighting is, again, Khan using Baby Khan as a nunchuck to fight a couple apes. 
And then I'm sitting there going, why isn't it just Team Con 2? Granted, would that matter? I guess not really because I still have a bunch of human characters that I don't give a shit about. At least Constant Island, the whole 70s backdrop of Vietnam that gave an intrigue in the whole premise backdrop of it all. Not the case here. You got John Goodman. And yeah, he plays the same guy over and over again, but you still got Samuel Jackson. And it might be the same guy over and over again, but it's still Sam motherfucking Jackson. And you got John Goodman. and Even Brie Larson didn't lose her mind yet. In that movie. And. One of the few decent scenes. Is. Con feasting. Giving a piece to the baby Con. Not trusting Con. Moving closer. The bits between Con and baby Con. Sally is the best character stuff in this movie. And. Better than anything the humans do. And it's one of the only decent things in this boring ass film. One of the only decent things. The show constant humanity. Baby Con realizing you don't have to do it with dialogue. They do it with looks. With physical attributes. I like that. I did like that scene. Again, it's one of the only scenes worth a shit. And actually, this is when Godzilla then has a 10-second fight with this other one. And it's literally like a 10-second fight. And so when this, the deaf girl and the, the remaining people, they find the tribe. I mean, they're the tribe from Peter Jackson's town or Skull Island. They, they just look like any other murderous tribe, but they're not too murderous. And... If you, there, I don't give a shit about anything that's going on in this story. I don't care. Good, you're psychic. You're psychic. Give me a lottery ticket or get the hell out of my face. Call Miss Cleo. Uh, and oh yeah. Uh, that's when Baby Con leaves uh, Team Con to the whole tribe of ape men. And this is where you get the meth head. And he looks like a meth head. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't have a crack pipe in his pocket. He has a whip that's a spine, spinal cord. This seems like a neat idea, but this guy's a wimp. I mean, for, like, I, these two to team up to fight an enemy, and this is the guy you have? Guy Dan, King Dedora, any other monsters, the Smod monster, will beat the hell out of this guy. Even King Kong, like, he just a few is then King Kong whips his ass. Whips his ass like a Daddy 05. Just, <laughs> just whips his ass. Which makes sense, it's a meth head. They might be high, but you can take your measly if you can. Dude, too high to understand what's going on. So he has this thing, this crystal that controls this other creature, Shimo, which is like a white Godzilla that shoots ice. I like the design of the creature. I think it looks cool. It's shooting ice? Okay. Vastly underused. Vastly underused. It's in one scene and then in the like 10, 15 minute finale. That's it. And again, Khan. Apparently, Khan can only fight other ape men. Anything else, he's pretty much null and void at this point. Because he couldn't fight the creatures at the beginning, he had to use traps on it. He technically fought the server, but we didn't get to see him fight. Shimo, he can't fight at all, he just blocked in it, and then his hand gets frozen. Runs off, and uh, Baby Con helps him. They get to Dan Stevens, and lo and behold, Dan Stevens is like, "Hey, I got something for you. You like the power glove? It's so bad. I stole it from Bumblebee. He was sleeping. I short circuited him. I stole his fucking hand, and I put it on your hand. Now, at least Team Con can jack off if he's a righty. So he got jacking hand back. So kudos to him." Jack Rowell is fucking movie. And 
then it's like, well, yeah, Khan's too much of a pussy. He can't do this by himself, so we need Godzilla. Even it's like they don't say it, but it's like, yeah, Khan's too much of a pussy. He can't do this on his own. We need Godzilla. So they go get Godzilla, who's again. They're in like Egypt. And Khan and Godzilla walk around and they probably kill like a thousand people because you see that there's people in the pyramids running for their lives, all this rubble chasing them. Uh, what you don't see is the cry of thousands plummeting to their deaths or the rocks crushing their every orifice and artery out of their eye hole while they just do, 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 do. and then they fight uh, more like Tom pushes I mean Godzilla pushes Tom shit in and then Godzilla gives Tom a suplex suplex city bitch so Khan, I mean, Godzilla's Brock Lesnar. <laughs> God, God. Or Triple H with his... His, uh... Golden shovel. But yeah, Godzilla's pretty much Brock Lesnar. Suplex City! And, again, Khan... Can, is always going to be Godzilla's biatch. He can have a super axe. He can have a super power glove thing. It don't matter. Because, da, da, he did a couple punches in, but Godzilla, get that shit out of here. Ready to kill him, and then Mothra. If you want to, how the hell did Mothra come in? Because the Psyker Girl and the tribe, they also are big Mothra people. How convenient. You know, we had Mothra and came the monsters, and it died, and it, you know, gave the power to Godzilla. Well, thankfully, these people also have a thing for Mothra. And it's total fan service. That's why they put Mothra in there. Mothra is put in here like Wonder Woman and Babin v Superman Dawn of Justice. It really that's what it felt like. There's a bit like Godzilla, Mothra, and King Khan. I felt like I was watching Babin v Superman again. Now I'm thinking Mothra but got to do a duty. <laughs> If it uh, it did talk, but I'm sure if we could hear its voice, it would be doubted though. Doubted, doubted, doubted. We got to do a duty. <laughs> There's no other reason for Mothra to be there. The sighted girl is a sighted girl who could talk the con. Her sighted abilities, she could just tell Godzilla. Well, why why do that? Because all this Mothra stuff is pointless. Well, it helps the humans. Yeah, the humans. I don't give a shit. I hope they die. Because Mothra doesn't do really anything to the much of the, the two main villains. Not to Shimo, and not to the meth head. It shoots a couple apes because it's hate, saving the humans. Like I give a crap about the humans. I hope they crash and burn. That's fine. Like Mothra just felt so forced, so pushed into here and it's like... To me, it was lame fan service, in my opinion. So, and they even screw up like a potentially cool moment where now Godzilla, whatever the hell Mothra said, I will laugh if they had put subtitles in it. Uh, Godzilla's like, okay. And by the way, Adam Wengar, the director, this old BS you put online, oh, like your buddy top film. Go do something like a Buddy Top film. You must not have seen Buddy Top movies, buddy. Of course, this is the guy that made Blair Witch 2016, which was a piece of shit. So, I... Adam Wingard, please get the hell out of this franchise. I don't think, I don't think you're that good of a director. Ready or Not was okay. I was like, the only film I could think of that it was okay. Even your segments on VHS sucked. Even some of the VHS ones I liked, your segments sucked. So, yeah, please get away, dude. I don't think you're a good director. Blair Witch 2016. You know what? I did not like Godzilla vs. Khan. I would say even that was better than this. I would. Not by much, though. Because here, just the... At least, like... Even though I had issues, even the fight with Metro Godzilla felt a bit more impactful than the fight in this. I'm like, this is the fight at the end? 
So they get to the Hollow Earth, and then Khan's on Godzilla's back, and Beth heads on the Shimo's back, and they do this bit where they're going to go in slow motion, ready to hit, but no, oh, is, who's going to hit who? No, is in fact there's some explosion, and they all fly back anyway. So oh, we don't see the impact. Nah, <laughs> cut the balls from it. The red collide, and it cuts. For this other explosion, so they'll flow around in, in zero G. Which Godzilla and Shimo can't do a whole lot in zero G. Even Khan and like they can't none of them can really do much in zero G except kind of push each other. They get up top. Khan punches the meth head, punches his tooth out. Khan can't do anything to Shimo. You think, okay, show that Khan can have somewhat of a chance, like he could dodge and he could use his traps or use his thinking to go against Shimo? No. It just shows that he's completely useless against Shimo. Like Godzilla, he could take on this meth head all by, he could take on these two guys by himself, really. He could. Khan punches the meth head. Shimo and Godzilla push... I mean, yeah, Shimo and Godzilla push each other a couple times. I was surprised there wasn't even a thing where, like, they shoot at each other and, like, the ice and the time is, like, canceling each other out. I was surprised they didn't do that. Or, like, it shoots and Godzilla's moving and then Godzilla shoots and Shimo's dodging it. They didn't even do that. Like, battling... They don't do that. Grab because they're in a city and there'll be a lot more destruction. Well, then find a way on the strip to work around that. Why well, said the edifice is shit. Okay, to, to explain what all happens during the end fight, Khan punches the meth head's tooth out. Godzilla and Shimo push each other. Shimo throws ice blasts at Khan and Khan blocks it with his hand, jack off hand. Godzilla tries to hit and hits a little bit of the meth head, gets the whip, breaks it. Baby Khan takes the axe, breaks the crystal. Khan grabs the meth head, throws it. Godzilla whips it with his tail, bounces off. Shimo freezes him. And then Khan smashes him down like he's Sub-Zero. Flawless victory. Because the meth head is a wimp. He's a complete wimpy antagonist. There was never a chance anybody would lose to this loser. The fact that all those eight... I mean, well, it was because Shimo, that's why. Oh, and then Shimo's not that bad of a guy. He's not that bad. He was just being controlled. He was being controlled. So he's actually an ally. And I'm sitting there going, how cool would it have been if this was just a Team Khan movie and Khan fights Shimo and Khan's the underdog and there's no way he can win, but he barely manages because of his thinking, because of trust, because of this and that. And he's ready to kill Shimo, but he doesn't. And then Shimo's confused, and they work around it. And Khan realizes the crystal, and he's able to break the crystal, or make it not work. Or maybe there's something on his neck. There's something on his neck, and he rips it off. Yeah, there's something on his neck that controls it. Khan rips it off, throws it. Because Khan puts two together. Maybe the deaf girl. You know. Whatever the sign language is. Khan realizes. Rips it. Throws it. Shimo has a chance. Realizes it did something well. And then. Boom. The finale. She, you know. You think the meth is going to control Shimo. But Khan rides out. He's riding Shimo like a damn dragon. 
and Ton is Dennis Quaid, and they're cue the I don't know, never ending story. Just goes in. Shimo is freezes some of the apes and Ton smashing them. Maybe there's other creatures here. Shimo is doing what he can, and Ton beats the hell out of dodging the spine whip breaks it over his knee or uses it and puts it around the meth head and flips him. That would have been so much better, in my opinion. So much better than this lame-ass trap. Again, Khan punches a tooth out. Oh, and one more moment. There's the moment where Meth head throws a building and Khan punches it with so that's that's another moment. That's it, these like these little moments. And you're like, that's it? Like it felt anticlimactic because you have one that's not an antagonist, it's just uh, a poor creature being controlled. So we can't hurt her too much, we can't mess with it too much, we can't screw it up too much, she's gonna be an ally. And then the other is this wimpy ass link headed method. And again, the humans suck. The music. I I dare anyone to remember one note from the musical score in this movie. One score one piece of musical score in this movie. I dare you to try to tell me what it was without looking it up. The songs, the only song I gave an iota or crap about was Step into the Twilight Zone. But I mean I like the song, but it's just when they're going to the portal, I'm like, okay, whatever. Some of the songs, like, they try to be Guardians of the Galaxy, but the other songs I could give a rat's ass about the other songs. Like, maybe they're okay, but at the same time, I'm like, whatever. I guess they're trying to be Guardians of the Galaxy, but they failed. Like I said, I just don't understand what people like about the film. I'm sorry. It's not non-stop action. It's not non-stop monster action. I'm sorry, that's not the case. Uh, the fight scenes, for the most part, are rather lame. They're not that many as people make it out to be. The human characters suck. They're boring. Godzilla Minus One, I'm not expecting a Godzilla Kong film to be that serious. What I'm expecting is, if that film, for a tiny budget... Can write characters worth the crap and, and some iota. At least write characters that are fun. Interesting. Or you know what? Just take an actual chance and make it more and more on con, more and more Godzilla. Make you where they're stuck somewhere. And they don't like each other. And it would be risky. And it would be hard to do. But making movies is not easy. They're, to they're together. They don't trust each other. Godzilla anytime. You know. Always had things betray him. Godzilla. I mean King Kong does stuff. And Godzilla is like. Hmm. It would be tough to do. They're stuck in the place. They're stuck in the hollow earth. Kong knows the area. Godzilla doesn't. So, uh, physical, non dialogue storytelling, that would be tough to do. It would be very tough to do. But, again, movies are tough. And here, it just, it felt so generic. And it was so, just boring. It was a boring movie to watch. And it's not that I... Yeah, again, I like Colin Star Island. I like Godzilla Minus One quite a bit. So it can be done. This... I said not much. Up. I, I mentioned the first hour. What, what all was there? Maybe a couple minutes? The third act. Are people really going to be rewatching that third act anytime in the future? Or maybe you had a good theater experience, but when, you know, two months later or three months later or a year later, you don't want, eh, eh, eh.
I don't think this is going to be a movie that will hold up for people. I could absolutely be wrong. I just don't see it that way. Maybe because of the bereft movies worth a crap in theaters. But again, if people like it, that's fine. I'm not going to crap on people's opinion on that. If you like it, that's cool. Just saying, I thought it was not as bad as Madame Web. Not as bad, I mean, it's not the worst film of the year. But I'm not a fan of the movie. And again, I would even put Godzilla vs. Khan above this. Because that one, even the finale felt a bit more bigger in staging compared to this one. And Mecha Godzilla felt more like a force than, again, this Beth head. Just a lame antagonist, man. And I just repeat myself. Again, the humans suck. The little deaf girl, she's deaf and she's a girl. whoop de doo I don't care. And Wingard, get the hell out of here, man. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.